this was a uh, this was a series. We were moving into a geometric series um, that we looked at yesterday, and we noticed a problem. Right? If you try and play around with this guy, because of this infinity thing, right? We land in some problems when we try to sum the series. Does anyone remember what we actually did? What did we do with this? It wasn't many lines at all. It was like three or four lines. Okay, we multiplied this series by two. Why two? Why not three or four or minus one or? It goes times the rate common ratio. Yeah, good. Excellent. So the ratio in between these is two, and the way that we got our formula for the sum of a GP, which was here's one of the forms, and um, you can write the other one. Um, the way we wrote the derive the result for the partial sum is we, we did this trick. We multiplied by the common ratio, right? So of course we got this. Now, in exactly the same way, I did the, I tried to make S, the sum, the subject, by taking line two and subtracting line one. That's what we did, right? And long and short of it, 2S minus S is just S, right? And because all of these terms cancel and you're subtracting the first line, right? All you get is this lone survivor. And that's problematic, right? So I've done this a number of times uh, as we've gone through this topic over the last couple of weeks. I said, when you, when you deal with infinity, um, these normal games that we play, we just addition, subtraction, multiplication, right? Um, is very, very problematic. If only, if only we had a tool that could cope with things like infinity, that could deal with all the apparent problems. Oh wait, we do. We do have a tool, we learned it in like term two, that is specifically designed, like it was literally invented, to deal with what happens when something goes to infinity and never ends. What tool was that? We call them limits, right? So limits, this is not the heading by the way, but it's the idea. Limits are our first surprising connection between this topic, which seems to have nothing to do with calculus, right? And a technique which we, you know, we learnt it so that we could deal with calculus. Why specifically? What was the particular use we had for limits? Do you remember? What, what um, happens when something, like, a graph approaches, like, infinity? Yes, okay, good. Now, the, yes and no. Um, if you, if you recall, right, we, we had a look at a whole bunch of, like, arbitrary limits and how to simplify them, but there was one particular limit that was really, really important to us, right? It's a limit that started like this. What was it? First principles. It was first principles, right? The first principles of, let's just quickly chuck it in there. First principles of what? What is this thing? It's the, it's the gradient of the tangent at a particular point, right? So we used this idea limits to, um, to wrestle this guy to the ground, and we succeeded, okay? Well, we're going to use limits to take something like this and work with it, okay? So you've already got this written, but underneath it, I want us to write this, okay? We define... Um, you can see I've actually already sort of put this notation in. Um, what I've got up here, in my first three lines and on your last end of working there, is um, this is not a partial sum anymore. Neither of these are purporting to be partial sums, right? Which is why I don't have an n there. Do you see that? Right? There's no n because S of n implies there are how many terms? N, n. n terms, right? There's a, there's a beginning and an end, right? But this doesn't have an end. So therefore, what we're going to define is this term, S, what it's equal to is, and we're going to use our, our limit notation here, okay? It's the limit of the partial sum as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and we have language for this, we would say n approaches infinity. Are you okay with that? That's we, what we're defining as um, s, right? So this is now kind of a different creature, right? This thing here, it's not a partial sum anymore. It's imagining what happens to those partial sums as I just add more and more and arbitrarily more terms, okay? Does that make sense? So very subtle difference. Good morning. Please make sure that you um, pay attention to when you write s, right, which is this thing going to infinity, and when you write sn, which is a partial sum. Okay, are you right with that? Okay, now clearly, some partial sums are not going to have a meaningful result for this limit. Do you remember? Good morning. Sometimes we looked at results, we looked at graphs, sometimes a limit exists, but sometimes it doesn't, right? For example, let's just quickly write this down here. Example. 
the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 on n. Okay? Or if you like, because remember, um, just like with sigma notation, in limits, these are all um, dummy variables. Yeah, they, they'll disappear uh, depending on the limit. What's happening here? This is the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. It's that familiar hyperbola, right? What's it equal to? Zero. It's equal to 0, right? And you have a picture in your head for what that graph looks like. So there you go, and you have this asymptotic behavior. Okay. But we saw there were all kinds of questions, actually, where the limit as, for instance, n approaches infinity of some kind of function, like say n squared, something as simple as that. No limit exists. Like this thing is just a parabola. It's not approaching anything. It's not approaching anything. And so this limit, it doesn't have a value. Like there's no sensible way to say, oh, okay, just like the limit of this is zero, that's where I'm going. Like, well, where is this going? And it's like, well, he's, he's never going to stop anywhere. He's never approaching anything, okay? So we're going to add some language onto this, which doesn't make so much sense in this context, but it makes more sense in our context up here with series, okay? We're going to call this guy here, where the limit goes toward an actual value. Okay, we're going to call this converging. Um, you know what converging is, right? It's when things go towards something inexorably, unstoppably. They're all approaching a certain thing. Whereas something like this, well, what's the opposite of the word convergent? Divergent, right? Divergent. This is something which is not approaching anything meaningful. Um, in in common terms, it's just blowing up, right? And whatever value of n you put in here as it gets bigger, the limit just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The limit doesn't exist, okay? So, when you have a look at a series, like say this first one that I've got up here, okay? Clearly, this is in the second category. Do you see that? As I put in larger and larger n, it's just blowing up. It's getting big, it's not, it's not coming to any particular point, okay? Whereas, if I can find a series that is converging on something, as I look at the partial sums and it's getting closer and closer and closer, then I can find the limit. And that's what I define to be the sum of the entire series. Does that make sense? Okay. And just keep in mind, that's what we define to be. Mathematicians didn't have to define it this way. Uh, and so if you feel a bit uncomfortable about some of the results that we're going to arrive at later today, um, keep in mind, it's about... Like, I want this. We want this to be equal to this. This is the answer that makes the most sense, so that's how we define it, okay? So, now I want to think about what kind of a series will do this? What kind of a series will converge? Maybe I should ask this question. Why is it that this series we wrote up here, why is it that it diverges? What about the series makes it diverge? Yeah. Um, the set, the sequence that um, gathers its um, terms from gets exponentially larger as it moves uh, the larger the number of terms. Yeah, fantastic. Um, exponentially larger, <laughs> it's funny, because you've got, what, what are these terms if I rewrote them? Okay. Uh, in terms of the powers, right, they're 2 to the 0, and then 2 to the 1, and then 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4, etc. Okay. I guess you could argue whether that's more like a, a polynomial than an exponential, but that's okay. It gets really big, really fast, and it gets bigger, faster as it grows, okay? So that's the problem. In other words, it's all about R, right? That's what makes a series shrink or grow, yeah? R in this case, the common ratio of course is? It's two in this value, in this um, series, right? Now, let's just underneath here think, all right, well, what kinds of other series are gonna have this problem? Because we need to know what to avoid, right? For example, if I make this smaller, Suppose I made it like, I don't know, say one and a half. Okay, let's try one and a half. You can write this underneath here. What kind of series would I get if R were one and a half? I'd start with one. Come in. Good morning. Right. What's one and a half squared? Come on, we know what one and a half squared is, right? It's, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, because it's three over two, it's nine over four, right? We might as well actually write it as 9 over 4 because that will make it a little easier to do with the powers, okay? What's the next term going to be? It's 3 over 2 and I'm cubing, right? So that's going to be 27 on 8. And I think the next one will be 
A1 on 16. 16. And I'll do one more, just so you can see it. Uh, did I? Yeah, of course I did. Whoops. <laughs> Okay, so there's my series. Now clearly you can see, even though I made the ratio smaller, do I not have the same problem? I, I still have the same problem. This thing is still blowing up, it's still diverging. Right? Think with me, what's the, what's the smallest I could possibly make my ratio so it still blows up, so it still gets bigger and bigger and bigger forever? Yeah. Greater than one, maybe? Okay, so, so if I have two, or if I have one and a half, or if I have like 1.00001, or even if I have one. Let's think about that series. Oh yeah. If the ratio were just one, and by the way, that'll still be a GP because I can do my test, um, turn three on turn two, turn two on turn one, it'll still pass, right? What's that series look like? Now I know it's trivial, it's a straight line. But it's still diverging, isn't it? Like it's not going towards a value like one on n is going towards a value. Okay? So this this is my particular point, right? This is my my end point where if I'm one or anything above, I'm in trouble. Okay? I'm in trouble. Now, as we'll discover in a second, that's the, not the only place that there are problems. I'll let you have a think. Maybe you've worked out already where there where else there are problems. But let's stop thinking about problems now and think about a place where it works, okay? 